So since we've got all of our commissioners here, um, I'll go ahead and for, call to order this meeting of the Greenfield Conservation Commission at 6.32 p.m. on March 14th, Pi Day, 2023. Um, all commissioners are present with the exception of Rachel. Um, and just to note that this meeting is being held virtually and if any technical interruption occurs and the meeting suddenly ends, um, we will not be resuming tonight and all items will automatically continue to the next scheduled meeting date, uh, which would be the 28th. Um, and hopefully people's power doesn't go out. <laughs> and, uh, if your power goes out and you're supposed to be on the agenda, um, we'll try to come back to you. All right. Uh, also, you may have heard that this meeting is being recorded, and if anyone else is recording the meeting, um, you're required to let me know. Okay. Doesn't sound like anyone is. So, uh, first item on the agenda is approval of meeting minutes from February 28th, 2023. Make a motion to approve the February 20th minutes. Second. Okay, a motion to approve the minutes uh, by Fletcher, seconded by Erica. Any other discussion on the minutes? I had a couple comments. So I think the second sentence, so for the public hearing regarding the um, supermarket construction at 208, it says it is located within previously developed area. Do we mean to say previously developed riverfront? Is that is that a jurisdictional term? Um, I think that makes sense because I don't think it was, it was trying a, to be, but it could be to be more specific. Yeah, I mean, because it's a riverfront redevelopment. That's exactly what I'm getting at. I think that's really relevant to this project. So I think that we want that in the minutes as being a redevelopment riverfront area project. Okay, that makes sense. Um, and then I had another comment on the second hearing, or maybe it was the third hearing, which is all the way on page four of six. Um, Travis interpreted the performance standard the same way DEP and Mark Stinson. Steve stated that the stream was man-made in the 80s and has about an inch of water on wet spring days. Under a limited project, the applicant would need to prove the hydrologic connection to the downstream ecosystem. And my question is, is that true? I thought under a limited project, we would need to demonstrate an ecological improvement. Not necessarily that is a hydrological connection, but that there would be an ecological improvement. I'm sorry yeah. if I'm missing that, but that was my no. question. Yeah, I remember. I remember during the meeting we were talking about how um, the like the stream restoration project would need to improve the connection to the downstream hydrology. So I wonder if it's a. I wonder if it should be improve instead of prove oh yeah maybe that's it i think i think that's what i remember uh, mark saying as well yeah because i think that was <laughs> that's like in wetlands protection act um uh that's like language that's in there about improving the hydrologic connection okay that was all i had okay good catches very thorough So we get those two comments. Uh, sounds like no other edits need to be made. Um, so we can do a, a roll call vote on approving that with those edits. Um, Fletcher? Aye. Erica? Aye. Kristen? Aye. All right, and I am also an aye. So uh, the minutes from February 23rd believe that's what that was <laughs> are, are approved it's 28 right 
20. 20. Oh, yeah, 28. 28. Sorry. Yeah. February 28th, I approved. Okay. So um, tonight on our agenda, we have two continued public hearings. Um, and I, uh, just a note for Mitch, um, I was thinking in the future, if we have public hearings that are continued from a previous meeting, maybe like on the agenda, it could say continued from, and then have like the date that it was continued from the previous meeting. Yeah, that makes sense. Just to, just so it's easier to like follow right. the yeah, yeah. paper trail in the future. Okay, so uh, first on our agenda um, is public hearing a notice of intent cell tower installation, map R24, lot 11, DEP file number 1680352. The project is for the construction of a cellular tower with associated equipment and fencing and a new driveway with access off Fairview Street West. The project will construct a 170-foot tall monopole, electric and telco equipment backboard, equipment cabinet, and generator within a 50 by 50-foot 50 compound consisting of an eight-foot tall chain link fence topped with barbed wire. The equipment cabinet and diesel generator will sit on a proposed eight by eight-foot and four by eight-foot concrete pads, respectively. The project will also construct a gravel access driveway approximately 10 to 12 feet wide and 170 feet long to the compound following existing paths where feasible. Proposed electric and telephone utilities will run from an existing utility pole on Fairview Street West to a proposed utility pole within the parcel and then underground parallel to the access drive into the compound. And do we have someone here? We might have multiple people here to talk about this one. Yes, we do. This is Steve Herzog with VHB, and uh, I was at the, the opening of this hearing. We also have uh, George Janis who, with Verity Wireless and uh, Michael Rosen, attorney, with our, our team, and Lewis Hodgetts, who is the professional engineer who designed the, the stormwater uh, best management plans, and also Rachel Luna, PE from VHB. As I recall, the, the comments the commission had last time were with regard to the stormwater management, so the BMPs. Uh, so I'll be deferring to uh, Lewis to address those. But I'll say the first, uh, well, actually, why don't I just, do you want to address the, the questions that, as you pose them to us? Or how would you like to proceed? Uh, yeah, I guess before we get into that, I'll just point out that I was not at the the, um, the previous meeting where this um, where we talked about this project, um, but I did watch the video of the meeting and I filled out a form for the Mullins rule to you know say that I did watch that meeting. So um, uh, so I I am in the loop on this one too, but I wasn't there. Um, I think there was a an updated plan that was submitted. Is that yes. correct? So maybe we should start with the plan and just talk about what what has changed and um, and then yeah uh, and like while we're looking at that maybe um, you know talk about the specific questions that the commission had last time. Okay, sure. Um, Lewis, do you want to? share your screen and, and talk about the plans? Sure, I'd be happy to. <clears throat> so the only change that we made uh, from the, the last time, which I also was not at, but did watch the video on, uh, so I am aware of the commissioner's questions. Um, we extended what was originally a silt fence, uh, it terminated right around here. Um, we extended that and replaced it with a filter sock uh, up and around the driveway to make sure we captured any potential runoff uh, from the construction of the site. Uh, I, as far as I believe, that is the only change that we made um, at this phase. Okay, and I know, so I know there was a question about um, that 
DEP had a question, and I know other commissioners had a question about whether, um, you know, like the rock check dam was necessary and whether it could just be sheet flow, because um, with the check dam, then there's going to be maintenance requirements. And um, so I guess, I don't know, maybe, I think that's that was one of the questions was, uh, I think specifically for you was, you know, uh, whether whether that whole like pretreatment with the check dam was necessary and why and um, yeah if you could just talk about that a little I guess yeah I can explain that um, in the last meeting Stephen represented that this access road is gravel and the site compound is crushed stone and he was considering that a pervious uh, surface. Uh, the way that it was designed, though, um, had these as impervious surfaces. Uh, so the compacted crushed gravel, it can go either way on whether you consider it pervious or impervious. Um, for the sake of the design, we treated it as impervious. And then with the site compound itself, while that's a crushed stone and will freely infiltrate, it is the intent and desire, ideally, that future carriers co-locate on this site. Um, so there would be potentially future buildings within this compound, um, taking up significant portions of it potentially. So in our design approach, we treated the entire surface as impervious, uh, which then created the overall impervious area for the site. Um, in our review of the the rules, the low impact design criteria, which we tried to follow to the best of our abilities is good recommendations, but as far as we could tell, it was not formally adopted. Um, and so per the rules, there was no way for us to treat that impervious area simply by disconnecting or a filter system. Um, it didn't meet the TSS removal requirements requirements, it didn't meet um, peak flow retention requirements. So that is why we have the swale system around the perimeter of the of the compound. Um, that swale system is designed as a wet swale or a wet channel. Um, it's effectively going to be a mini wetland. Um, because the groundwater table is so high based on the dam structure just to the north of this project, um, this swale could potentially have seasonal high water table that breaches the surface of the, the bottom of the swale. But we do anticipate that there will be wetland plants that will be established within that swale and that there will be some maintenance required for woody vegetation removal. However, the intent is for that to naturally vegetate um, as a somewhat as a constructed wetland wet swale uh, treatment system. Uh, anything outside of the, the upper edge of the berm that we're creating here, uh, that would just naturally revegetate. Um, and then this is a stone check dam overflow system, mostly to maintain um, some pass through conveyance to keep that swale at um, free draining, uh, but also provide the retention that is necessary uh, for the, the 10 year and 100 year storm events. So that, that was why the, the structural BMPs were required and why we have decided to keep them in place. Okay, thanks. And I know another question was about whether um, an like, operation and maintenance plan had been developed on you know, cleaning out sediment and the woody debris, or if you have like, if the company just has like a standard procedure they follow or you know, what, what that <laughs> looks like. Uh, I believe there was an operations and maintenance plan included in the report that we submitted. It should have been. It wasn't. Um, again, it's 
this swale is designed to naturally revegetate and should have constant vegetation in it. Uh, we don't intend to mow it uh, just based on the type of swale that it is and, and the way it functions. Uh, we act, would actually encourage wetland plants to grow in there. Um, given the soil conditions, the hydrologic bee soils, um, the stabilized swale, roadside swale that we're installing, we don't anticipate a lot of sediment buildup in this pretreatment treatment bay. Uh, in the unlike in the potential event that there is erosion that occurs within the road, the road's going to have to be repaired. And at the same time, they would have to remove any accumulated sediment in that pretreatment treatment bay. Um, but as a routine maintenance operation, we're not anticipating a lot of sediment buildup. Obviously, a semi-annual or recurring inspection uh, would be advisable just to make sure that that's functioning as designed. Um, that could be a condition that you guys impose on the project. Um, usually, what we have found is an annual inspection or a, every couple years is sufficient, uh, just given the limited amount of uh, potential runoff that the swale is going to see. Um, it's also, <coughs> sorry, um, this swale is currently designed for the 100 years to retain the 100 year storm or the vast majority of it. So even in the event of a, a silting, um, uh, silting event occurring, there is sufficient capacity in this to maintain treatment uh, for beyond uh, what it's designed for, for the water, water quality treatment and um, provided we don't have multiple 100 year storm events in a row, it should be fine. All right, yeah, thanks. I just wanted to add that, um, I think I missed it before, but there is a, a section in, in what was submitted for inspection and maintenance schedule and log. Um, and it says the swale, inspect roadside swale for signs of erosion. It said yearly. Um, site shall be inspected annually to ensure facility is stable. Um, in uh, roadside swale, inspect the roadside swale for signs of erosion, repair, or replace any failed check dams, remove accumulated sediment, reseed, or otherwise stabilize with crushed stone as necessary. Sediment forebay shall be inspected annually or as needed if erosion of the roadside swale has occurred, remove accumulated set, sediment and reseed. Um, and then same for the water quality swale, um, inspected annually for sediment. Uh, litter and debris and, you know, repaired as needed, so. Do any of the uh, commissioners who were actually at the, the last part of this hearing uh, have any questions or follow-ups? I, I have a couple of questions and comments. So um, thank you. That was, that was a very thorough um, summary of where we left off at our last meeting. Um, one of the questions that I had was about the erosion controls, and you said that you are extending them up further up the slope. Are you using a 12 inch sediment sock or what diameter sediment sock are you using? Yes, the intent was a 12 inch diameter sock. I noticed that I didn't actually label that as a 12 inch diameter sock that will be updated for our construction plans. Um, but yes, it will be a 12 inch sock. Thank you. And then I just had another question about the um, the maintenance logs for the BMPs. Um, is that, Travis, something that we can condition something along the lines of like, um, you know, I don't even know how it would be worded, but the commission and or DEP or would it only be the commission would have the authority to request maintenance logs? I don't know in perpetuity or something like that. I don't know how that would work. I mean, that's... if we ever noticed, say there was some, some kind of an issue and we wanted to request, you know, are they gonna mm -hmm. do it? 
do any preventative maintenance or like, I don't know, vac truck any accumulated fines out of the four bay or something like that. Um, would we have any authority to go back in and ask for any maintenance logs or how does that work? Yeah, I think it said in their uh, narrative that they would be keeping logs. And I think that could just be, you know, it goes along with what they say they're going to do anyway. So, I mean, we could just have that as a condition that, you know, these are inspected annually and um, logs maintained um, to be provided to the Conservation Commission upon request or whatever. Okay. I mean, I think right, that's I... pretty standard for like BMP maintenance uh, conditions. Go ahead, Fletcher. I just wanted to confirm the driveway is is said to be crushed stone, right? Or is it asphalt? Just because it says asphalt on the um, diagram. There is here. a there's an asphalt apron just to get us okay. past the sidewalk. And then the okay. remainder is a uh, crushed gravel. What's the got it? What's the um, material size for the crushed gravel? Is it greater than two inches? No. Uh, it would be a three quarter inch. Uh, basically, a, a road construction gravel. Okay. So I I think we have a Massachusetts DOT gravel spec uh, for that surface course. I think it makes sense then that you treated that as an impervious surface area. If it's less than two inches, I think that makes sense personally. For your modeling. I believe it it's a low it is a low fine gravel mix but it's still once you get compaction in there and the um just vehicle traffic over time will compact it further um generally we always treat it as com as impervious area which is why we what we did in this case as well Any other uh, questions or comments from commissioners? Or? Uh, my only other question was the past the check dam, there's a filter strip. And I haven't had a chance to look down the plan here, but is that is that just like a what what is that what composes a filter strip in that case? So that filter strip is just natural. We're not touching it at all, it's existing conditions. Um, it's, base, it's just existing uh, vegetated filtering. So it's not a, not a constructed vegetated strip. Got it. So you're not clearing any vegetation on that square? No, we're not clearing anything outside of the construction limits, which is the green line. Can you remind me, are you putting a like a wet seed mix or anything down? Yes, we would be reseeding with a wet seed mix. Is it, I'm sorry, is the seed mix handy? Do we have the species list? I don't believe we do currently. It would be a invasive free uh, wet seed mix. Um, if you have a preference on seed mix, we'd be happy to to use that. I think we would just want to make sure that everything that is in the seed mix is listed as native in the uh, county checklist. Sorry so to not... interrupt. Um, I got a notification that the meeting will end in 10 minutes because it looks like 
Oh. It's a free account. I don't know why. I don't know. They just let the subscription expire. Oh. Uh, is there time to go in and, uh, or do you have access to a payment method, Mitch, where you could re up the subscription? Yeah, let me try that. Okay. I was recently updating Zoom account stuff and it was pretty instantaneous, surprisingly. So I don't know. I don't know if this would be, but, or if it would change the meeting. It probably wouldn't, probably wouldn't change the meeting settings, I guess. But, um, it says to upgrade, please contact your primary account admin. Oh man. And there's a Gmail to contact. I I could I could share a link um for you guys to use if you want. We 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 kind of need to use the the meeting details shared with the uh the public. That's the only catch there. Yeah, I, can I, may I make a recommendation if sure. we drop off. I believe if you wait like two minutes and then we open the link again, it'll give you another hour. And I think it'll give you an hour at a time or a half an hour at a time. So just, I, I know when Zoom first came out and everyone was scrambling and doing <laughs> this, uh, that was one way to uh, work around. So I, I think, think if that would work, then that would be better than having to continue. That has yeah. worked for me. Yeah. Yeah. I, okay. Uh, well, again, well, and, and, I, I hope that it does, but it, it when Zoom first came out, it did work that you could just then re log back in and reinitiate. Okay, that sounds good. So I think I think we'll we'll try that then. Like once once the time runs out, um, everyone try to join again after I guess wait two minutes <laughs> and then uh, and then Mitch can start the meeting again, and then we can all join again. Um, and if it doesn't work, then I think our only option is to just continue it to the next meeting date, or we can try to set up another meeting before then with, well, no, because we have to say that during a meeting. So yeah, I, I think it would have to be the next meeting. Date. Jesus. Oh, man. Holy shit. Hey, uh, nice. Uh, hey, Mitch, can, um, can you just chat to everyone to make sure that they in case someone was away from their computer to let them know the, the plan. Yeah, so I think we're all going to have to be kicked out in like six minutes and then okay. we'll try to rejoin if possible. Um, I don't know. Should we say if that, that doesn't work, we should do a special meeting? Yeah, I mean. I think, yeah, can we do a vote? For that and then yeah um, we'll say that right now yeah in case it doesn't come back up so i mean i'll have to be at least 48 hours ahead of time posted 48 hours ahead of time um so i mean friday would be the earliest day we could do it we could do i don't know just tuesday next week just because we usually do tuesdays does that work for the other commissioners and the applicants? That works for me. It's okay. Yep. Okay. Did we hear from any of the applicants? Yes. If it doesn't work for anyone, let me know. <laughs> yeah, this is Steve Capshaw. This is insane. This is going to be our fifth meeting if you go to the next one. We've removed 90% of our project. What is, this is nuts. Can I know. You, can you do me a favor and just say yes in the next minute before this cuts off? So we can uh, do something on our property? I We can't do that because we're still in the middle of another public hearing here, so. We'll do that. Well, that's my thought. Okay, thanks. Jesus. Um, Mitch, I, I just want to, one more thing is there's there's no way to recreate a meeting with the same details in case it doesn't just sort of allow you to, in case the re rejoining of the same link doesn't work. Like, could you schedule a meeting with the same details? Um, I don't think so. It just makes a random okay. link. It auto. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's frustrating. Um, yeah. 
All right, so I'm sorry. Did we we want to vote that continuation um, special well, meeting rather, or? Um, I mean, I I'm not even sure what the vote. I mean, is the vote like if if we cannot get back on after this, then we'll have a special meeting on. That's what I would. On, what is that date? The 21st. Okay, I'll motion if if we can't get back on Zoom tonight, uh, we'll hold a special meeting on the 21st and continue all items from this meeting to that meeting. I'll second that. I'll all right. Um, any other discussion on that? All right, I'll do a roll call vote here. Erica? I'm sorry, for clarification on the record, uh, yes. at 6.30 p.m. at the same uh, time. Yes, same time, um, Zoom link. Hopefully the city will have the Zoom link fixed by then. <laughs> okay, uh, Erica was a yes. Kristen? Aye. Uh, yes. Um, Fletcher? Aye. All right, and I'm also an I. Um, I don't, MJ, I, I see MJ on here. I don't know if you have any access to the city's Zoom to be able to fix that. I'm trying to track down Christian to see if he can help out. Okay, thanks. Are we trying to find out if there is going to be another potential link for this evening or not? I think the idea is to try to use the same link. Um, I'm sorry, who who suggested the uh, George, was it George? No. I believe we're gonna try to use the same link shortly after it ends. Oh, Michael, excuse me. Michael, um, Michael was there a specific time limit before it sort of re- uh, yeah, No, again, re when Zoom first came out and they were doing the free accounts, they were all one hour and yeah. literally you would drop off and you could, click on like a minute later. Okay. All right. Hold on, I see MJ on the phone right now. Um, I just wanna, <laughs> less than a minute, this feels very tense. And I feel, I do feel very bad about this because we had another issue with Zoom in a previous meeting where the link was wrong. Um, and it technically wasn't a public meeting because the link that was public facing was the wrong link. And then now this issue. Recording already. Thanks. I, I'm filling my coffee cup while we wait for everybody. So okay. shut the screen off. Yeah, we'll let's start at uh, seven ten. Let's say. I don't know how long it's going to take people to join, or maybe that's too long. <laughs> About seven oh eight. I don't want to use too much of our time. Here. I think right before I logged off, Travis, there were 15 participants and we're up to 13. Okay. So we're pretty close. Maybe if we just wait right. another minute, if we can get up to 15. Yeah. Just just for the purpose of the recording, I'm going to say that we just had to um, restart the meeting because uh, Zoom was apparently using a free account and... Uh, so our time ran out. Are we I, not? Are we not paying? I mean, whatever. We can talk about this another time. <laughs> this was very so surprising. I just got I just got a message from um, MJ who said Christian is going to try to hop on and see if he can help. 
figure out. Oh, MJ's joining right now, but I got an email from her. Yeah. Oh, we have 16 I, now. I, I'm here. This is Christian. Um, <laughs> who, who is planning department? That is me. Uh, that's me. Do you want to try and make me the host real quick? quick? I don't know if that'll fix it. But I, we yeah, let me the, try. Yeah, I, that's the only thing I can really think of. I'm not sure right now. I don't. I don't see anything that says that there's a time limit. But it it didn't even say that before. I, I see Zoom meeting forty minutes in my top left. Um, yeah, I see that too, and I think that's how long it gave us. At least you you now know that if it happens again, you just log out and, and hop back on. So. Yeah, that was a yeah. key piece of information. Thank you. Yeah, we you got it. I'll just add that we do have the same number of participants now, plus one that we had before. So I think everyone's back. All right. I guess I'll make Mitch the host again because I don't think I'm going to fix anything by me, me being the host because I didn't get rid of the 40 minutes. Yeah. Okay, maybe maybe tomorrow someone at the city can <laughs> figure out why why this is going on. Hopefully, it won't happen to anyone else. Yeah, there's there's specific city Zoom accounts, um, so I don't know if what happened, but okay, it looks like everyone's back now. So let's continue our discussion of uh, notice of intent for cell tower installation, DEP 1680352. I'm not sure if we were in the middle of a question. I don't, <laughs> it got a little chaotic there, so. We were talking about the seed seed mix. Um, oh yeah, if there was a seed, oh yeah. For the, for the swale area. Yeah, so one of, I mean, one of our standard conditions that we usually have is that any seeding or plants that go in um, have to be native. So that would be, that's a condition that we would already be applying, you know, ba based on what our standard conditions usually are. So that's good to point that out. So do we want to, um, I don't know if the applicant want suggestions or I know uh, we have a native plant list. I don't know if that covers all the um, grasses and whatnot, but I suppose we, we can probably just figure this out pretty quickly if we want to approve a, a seed mix or, or send up suggestion. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say as, as long as, as long as they're okay with making sure it's a native seed mix, I think that should. Yeah, and just Double check against the county checklist. Um, sometimes applicants will check regional, you know, native seeds, and it's really like county specific. We want to make sure it's, you know, native in Franklin County. I think in the past, sometimes we've had the applicant just submit the list kind of right before they're going to actually do it. So we can just kind of check it just in case. So that could be part of the condition, maybe. All right. Do you want to uh, review conditions and? Well, I guess I, I'm just wondering if there are any more questions or comments. And if not, I can open it up to public comment. And then okay. if we don't have any more questions, we can close the public hearing and then decide to whether or not to issue an order of conditions. So if the commission has no other questions right now, which I'm not hearing any, okay, then I'll open uh, I'll open this up to public comment. Does anyone here have any public comments? I think everyone here is for a, a different project. Mm -hmm. 
Not hearing any public comments. So uh, we'll close, close the public comment period. And um, if the commissioners feel they have everything they need, uh, someone can make a motion to close the public hearing. Make a motion to close the public hearing. I second that. All right. Um, can we do a roll call vote on that, Erica? Aye. Fletcher? Aye. Kristen? Aye. All right, and I'm also an aye. So the public hearing is closed. Um, does anyone want to make a motion to issue an order of conditions? I'll make a motion to issue an order conditions for uh, 112 Newton Street. Second. All right, and then any further discussion on order of conditions? Um, so conditions that, you know, we have our boilerplate conditions that includes, uh, you know, native, native plants and native seeds. Um, Kristen, I know you would, mentioned uh, like the sediment sock being 12 inches. I don't know if that has to be a condition or that sounds like what they were going to do anyway. Um, yeah, did did somebody say that there was going to be one more plan revision submitted to the commission or is that something we should just condition to close this out? We'd prefer if you just condition it. We'll address it in our next round for local and approval. Can you remind me, Lewis, is that, so did you have it around the toe of the slope, something more substantial, like a silt fence and straw bales, or was it just a Filtrex sock the whole way? Uh, originally, it was intended to be a silt fence. And then after the planning commission meeting, the last one, which I did not attend, uh, you all were okay with just doing the filter sock. Uh, it's a- a flat site, so it, it, we're not anticipating a lot of uh, erosion at this location. Can you remind us what that grade change is from the top of the slope to the toe of the slope at the limit of work line? I believe it, it's a 10 foot elevation change from the road down to the site location. Um, it's a pretty steep slope, but we're kind of cross cutting it. I believe, um, fortunately, I closed that window. Uh, one minute. Hey, while he's pulling that up, Travis, do we have a boilerplate that says if sediment builds up to halfway up the erosion control barrier, then the contractor shall remove it or replace the erosion control barrier with something more substantial? Or how, do we have anything wording in our, no? I, I'm not that I can think of. I don't know, Mitch. Do you have a do you have a file you could open that just has like our boilerplate conditions? Yeah, if you just open up any old order conditions, um, you got a draft in this like folder. Health Camp Road was a recent one. I mean, because I would think that maybe a compost filter tube that's 12 inches diameter would be fine, but those do squish down. And if sediments built up over six inches, it's not really gonna function anymore. So I don't know, just thinking about that, but I hate silt fence. So I don't know. I don't think we have a condition like that. I think that's pretty standard to say if sediment is built up to halfway up the erosion control barrier height, that it would be removed by the contractor while the ground is unstable um, or replaced to something more substantial. I think that's pretty standard. I'm checking because that may already be in our notes, our erosion control notes. Uh, 
Um, it doesn't say that specifically, but our conditions do um, do say that erosion controls need to be inspected and replaced if if required. Um, erosion control shall be inspected after every rainfall to ensure that maximum control has been provided. The applicant shall immediately control or correct any erosion problems that occur at the site. Yeah, it doesn't say anything about, it just says like, if there's a problem, fix it, but it doesn't specify exactly what that means. I mean, we can make that a condition though, if we want. Lewis, did you see if that's in the notes? Because maybe it would be better if we just kind of cross-reference the plans or I don't know. If that's kind of too messy. I'm reading, I'm reading through my notes. It's usually yeah. in our notes, so I'm just. Because then it would be on the plan of record. While, while he's looking at that, um, uh, we had also talked about having a condition. I mean, it's already in there, in their plan, but um, inspecting the BMPs annually and maintaining a logbook to be provided upon request. That was really all we had talked about as potential like conditions. And that, sorry, I to that later note, that is on our plans on our note sheet. That that would be yeah. Included, so. Yeah, I think I think um, DEP. Uh, I think Mark, especially at DEP, uh, recommends having that in the conditions, and then also on the order of compliance as an ongoing condition, just as like a reminder. And then did we, we mentioned maybe getting the seed mix list, like pre-construction pre or pre-seeding? Is that a condition that comes Yeah, I think that, that's a good one to add. Native seed mix. Do we want that to be to be approved by the Conservation Commission? Otherwise, uh, it's just sending the, a list. Yeah, or by the agent. And do we want that pre like pre construction or pre stabilization or? Sounds like something that'd be easy to do pre-construction and get it out of the way. Okay, well, I think just to move this along um, with the sediment, uh, I think we could just make that a condition to remove buildup sediment if it's half the height of the erosion control. Sounds like a plan. 
whether it's on the plan right now or not. Since we only have 40 minutes in this meeting, it's already restarted again. Okay, Mitch, do you think, does that all, do you think you got all that? Um, I got the native seed mix and the erosion control. And then um, inspecting the BMPs annually and maintaining a logbook to be provided to the Conservation Commission upon request. Okay. I just uh, wanted to point out to the applicant, and if you wouldn't mind uh, confirming, uh, there, there's an as-built plan requirement for uh, post-construction that's uh, helpful for us. Okay. Are we ready to vote on those, <laughs> the order of conditions with those? Uh, just to remind everyone again that part of the motion should have the interest of the act. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Which I can pull those up. So yeah, uh, the order of conditions form five, findings pursuant to the well, to Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, following a review of the above reference notice of intent based on the information provided in this application and presented at the public hearing, this commission finds that the areas in which work is proposed is significant in the following interests of the Wetlands Protection Act, check all that apply. Mitch, is this one for this project? No, it's just an old one, just so we can okay. see. Okay, okay, that's what I thought. Not, not sure we know enough to really check. Well, A or E, although I mean, certainly they yeah. it's all connected. But I think this is definitely G. Wait, C F G H I. Pollution prevention, protection of wildlife habitat, groundwater supply, storm damage prevention, and flood control. Agreed. Yeah, I don't know. Does the applicant have any insight on whether it's public or private water supply? I have a feeling if it's buffer it's zone, PW, there's no shellfish or fisheries, but um, what about public or private water supply? No. We did not identify any in the vicinity. So. Okay. Yeah, and this is just an intermittent stream, so I'm guessing probably not. Okay. So uh, we had a motion to issue the order of conditions um, that was seconded, so we can do a roll call vote on that. Erica? Aye. Kristen? Aye. Fletcher? Aye. All right, and I am also an aye. So we will issue an order of conditions for this project and uh, Mitch will be in touch with all the paperwork. Thank you very much. You very much. All right, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> all right, let me get back to my agenda here. So next on our agenda is another continued public hearing uh, notice of intent, parking area construction at 15 Greenfield Street, map R05, lot 2828 c EEP file number 1680353. The proposed building expansion and southerly site improvements have been removed from the proposed plan. The revised plans are for the parking area construction, which has been moved outside of the 25-foot no disturbed zone of the bordering vegetative wetlands. There are 63 existing spaces and 120 proposed. And who would like to be presenting for this project? Um, I, I'll, I'll glad to start. This is Tom Hogan, civil okay. engineer with Wright Pierce. Uh, we, we've talked a couple times uh, before. Uh, I, I think you just introduced the, the project as well as I could have, Travis. <laughs> um, and we've uh, revised those plans based on director, uh, direction from uh, Mr. Capshaw there before you. Uh, we revised the 
uh, confirm the drainage computations have submitted those as well. Um, I, I don't think there's too much more to add. Sorry, I was just muted. Um, do you have the revised plan that you would like to share or uh, Mitch could share it just, to, just so we can look at the revised plan? Mitch can share it if he has access. Okay, that would work. Yeah, Mitch, can you zoom in a little there? Yeah. So yeah, so there's no no longer any work at the intermittent stream. And now it's just the parking area, which uh, can you remind me which line is the 25 foot no disturb? Is it that? Oh. It parallels the wetland line. Um, you can see the uh, wetland indicators are on the oh, inside yeah. loop. And the um, dark hatch is dashed line parallels it. And Mitch, if you went to sheet C6 with the grading. Right there. Nope. C4, C4, yep. Uh, I was going to suggest C6 if you can get to it. It'll show the uh, stormwater controls as well. Mm -hmm. But you can see there the, um, the the grading is the contours are without that zone, um, out of that zone. And there's C6. So just to clarify what you're saying is there's no grading within the 25 foot. Correct. That's correct. Yeah. There is grading within the 100 foot. Correct. Okay. And paving um, and stormwater. Okay. Tom, can, can you just... Um... I was looking for the, the soil uh, test pit locations. Did that, those make it onto this plan or? Uh, I see them in the legend. I just couldn't find them in the mm -hmm. plan sheets. If you go to sheet C5, one up from this. Right. And if you zoom in there, Mitch. And that's the process it'll go. They're grayed no. out. Yeah. If I can... you can look. There, oh, Fletcher. I, there's yeah. three of them right before you. They're in grayscale. Um, one is behind. I take that I, back. I there's, see them there's actually four. There's okay. at least four of them in there. Yep. Correct. Yeah. Thank you. I'm assuming we have a new application with this filing. No, we uh, we amended the plans um, under the existing application. Yeah, they were going to do a revised application to make it an ecological restoration project um, if they were moving the, the intermittent stream. Um, but I think we could, you know, approve the project per the plan dated March 10th, 2023. So the fees are the same and the category is the same. I'll have to check the fees. I, uh, to be honest, I didn't check that. We were focused on the, the project, but we'll uh, do an analysis of the fees to see if there's a change. I, I, no, it definitely would not be um, would not be more. Um, I suppose. Yeah, I was say it'd less. probably be less, if anything. All right, and just make sure the category is the same. Um, without the other work. But I think I, sorry, the application does does it it does need to be updated, like right? the actual NI NOI form mm -hmm. to reflect the actual project. Yeah. 
well, we can we can do that, and and that's fine. But you know, it's it's not terribly uncommon for changes to occur to a plan, and those changes be reflected in a uh, order of conditions. And if if you're comfortable doing that, that'd be fine. If if there is a letter from uh, Chuck Karen that was transmitted to Mitch, which describes the impacts and the change of the impacts that that's made a made part of this submission. So our, our preference is to to permit what we have under our existing application, knowing that the impacts have changed due to the passage of time. I yeah. I, I want to see the application. Do we do we have that on the server? Um, can we pull that up? I just want to make sure it's relevant. Um, I, I personally, well, I guess, can we can we approve something if the if the application and the category are different? Well, I'm not sure why the category would be different. Well, it would make the fees different, and it would make the entire filing different. And there's no more bank impacted, um, VVW impacted. It's just a buffer zone only now, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. And the whole filing is different. So why would this NOI form still be? applicable well the the re our thinking kristen was you know it's it's not uncommon that impacts change through the course of review and i i it would be it would be actually uncommon for me um for, for a project not to be tweaked at least a little bit you know maybe provide a little more mitigation or a little less impact and but i've never had to fill out a whole new application when that occurs the, the fact of the matter is the made a major element of this project still remains uh we we pulled out other elements because of um uh you know due to uh, discussions that have occurred and although those are no longer part of the application a, a major part of it is um w which we've submitted under I do agree with you, Tom, that, you know, when there's a little bit of a reduction in, say, bank or BBW impact or riverfront area impact, you don't need to fill out a whole NOI application, but this is a pretty significant change. So I just want to make sure that this proposal is still valid, um, that the category is still correct and that the fees are still correct, because those are two pretty big components of an NOI filing. Well, I would say this, the, the application that you're looking at right now uh, definitely has not been updated because we wanted to get this in front of you. Um, perhaps one thing we could do is is update that as a condition of discussion. Um, but we're 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 not proposing a, a new submission. Mark did look it over and he didn't mention doing a new NOI submission. So the category and the fees are the same. I think the fee might be different, but I think they paid more than they had to. So how do we reimburse that? I mean, do we cut the, give them the whole check back and ask for a new check? I'm just curious. I don't know this process. Those, those things can be easily figured out. This is Steve Capture. I don't want any money back. <laughs> I, I just want a yes. That's it. I don't need any money back, right? I, I, I don't know why the paperwork matters, right? That, right? I think the Conservation Commission, the spirit of it is to conserve the environment, right? So I don't care about the paperwork. I don't think you should either. And I don't want any money back. Since this is downscoping and like as long as Stinson saw it in the oh and the conditions will supersede or sort of be the the document that's guiding the project from then on. I I we uh, agree with that. As long as there's not like uh, Chris and I I think personally i was just concerned the narrative is completely different on the old form but as long as there's nothing um technical like the category or something that can invalidate uh you know that's exactly season. what i'm worried about is that the 20 you know the appeals period i just want to make sure all of our t's are crossed and our i's are dotted yeah. here this is a legal, we definitely don't want to draw it out yeah. this is going to be attached to the deed this is this is legal paperwork it's it's a, it's a permit application so Mm -hmm. I, mean, I guess I'd I like know to that, suggest, like, like Tom said, that the the impacts do change over, you know, these discussions. Um, but if the entire proposal is different, I just want to make sure that we're getting 
I don't know if it's a huge deal to just change the category and make sure we have the correct check amount. Well, the, I agree with um, like the, the money stuff. I think we can definitely handle after the. And fact. I don't even know. I don't even know if it's incorrect. I, it was just a question. I don't even. I don't even know the answer. I was just throwing it out there. It's you know. Can we yeah. can we really look at the uh, category really quickly? I don't know where the. Yeah, and I I mean I personally. I'm fine, you know, proceeding with this application. And um, I think Tom said, you know, we could even, one of our conditions could be that the application be updated to reflect the current scope of the project. I think in any event, you know, you'll be approving a, a set of plans that you have on your server that's uh, referenced by date um, that yeah. that I've embossed and that the limits are not allowed to extend beyond those which are shown on that document. Yeah. Yeah, I would be, mm -hmm. I'd be comfortable with that. I think the order conditions form would also reflect that zero linear feet of bank would be allowed, for example. Correct. Kristen, does that answer your question to your satisfaction for now? I mean, I still don't know if, what the answer is to my question. I asked a question and nobody answered it. Um, so I'm just curious what the answer is, but I guess if nobody cares what the answer is, then I'm ready to proceed. Okay have to check the categories so um i think well, people care but but we're willing to let them update it yeah so that's what i was thinking two. it'd be a category two for a parking lot and it's a buffer zone only project and a and it's for a parking lot. And so that would be if it's not in riverfront, what five hundred dollars split almost fifty fifty between state and town minus twelve. Well, it wasn't it wasn't in riverfront anyway. Right. So that's what I'm saying. So it's like almost fifty fifty state town minus twelve percent. So that's like two thirty seven and two sixty five or whatever. So I don't know what their original filing fee was, but I think that this would be a significant reduction. So I do I did want to just point that out that for category two, I don't know what it was originally filed as, but I think that's worth noting. Okay. And I, I think that's something that uh, I mean it it seems to be something that we could work out, you know. Um after the fact, I think. I agree. You got four minutes, by the way. <laughs> so, I mean, it looks like we're going to have to rejoin, but, yeah. you know, for at least a little bit here. But, um, do any of the commissioners have any other questions about the project as is, or should we go to public comments? All right, I can open it up to public comments then at this point. And I'm not hearing any public comments. <laughs> so we can close the public comment period. So, I mean, at this point, someone could motion to close the public hearing and then we could talk about issuing an order of conditions. Uh, I'll make a motion to close the public hearing for uh, 15 Greenfield Street. Second. I right, motion to close the public hearing by Fletcher, seconded by Erica. I don't know. can do a roll call vote on that. Erica? Aye. Kristen? Aye. Fletcher? Aye. All right, and I'm also an I. 
And I, I do just want to point out, I think this had a $3,000 filing fee. And it should go down to 500 Well, we can figure that out. Uh, but... Yeah. Um, I know we only have two minutes left, but does any, I think we could get started if anyone wants the motion to issue an order of conditions or. Yeah, I'll, I'll make, make a motion. A, oh, go ahead, Erica. Good. Make a motion to issue an order of conditions for the project at 15 Greenfield Street. Greenfield, in Greenfield, Mass. Is there a second on that motion? Oh. I'll second that. All right. So we have a motion to issue an order of conditions with seconded. Um, are there any special conditions that we would want to see on this project that's at this point buffer zone only outside 25, 25 foot no disturbed zone? Oh, I just have a question. Are there any um, storm drain discharges within the 100 foot? I've I, I'm sorry, I can't remember, Tom. Can you remember if where that detention basin? Yes. Correct. There is the same. Um, Mitch, can you put the drawing up? And Chris, and the location has not moved. Yeah, I it just is, don't remember. Um, I I would I would say this. It's um, you know, it's outside. It it's within the buffer. Mm -hmm. It's outside of 25 foot. It's at the logical, probable only place that that we could put it um, behind the um, westernmost building and to take advantage of the existing grading that occurs there. I just bring that up because that may change the fee. I, I don't know why I'm so concerned about this for you guys, but I am because $3,000 is a huge <laughs> fee. And I, you know, if this is, this is a significant change. So I just want to make sure you don't you know that you pay what you're supposed to pay so um it's a parking lot which is category two but if there's a storm water just check into that tom and just make sure you guys i will yeah <laughs> all right um we do have less than a minute so again we'll do like last time and we'll restart all right we had 10 participants before Let's see, we're still waiting on Erica. Uh, Erica and MJ, I think, is who we're waiting on right now. Yeah, we did have MJ Adams in this meeting, so I want to give her a minute just to before we get started again. And then, then we'll have everyone who was here prior to the second restart. I'm sorry again that we've had to do that, but thank you everyone for promptly returning to the meeting. Okay, we have everyone back now who was here at the second iteration of this meeting. So um, we can continue with our discussion here. So um, where we're at now, we motioned to issue an order of conditions. Um, and then we were gonna talk about any special conditions. Uh, it sounded like one special condition would be updating the, the uh, NOI form with the, the current scope of the project. Um, is there uh, just a question for uh, maybe Tom? Um, like, like the project we had earlier, is there, I'm assuming there's seating on the graded slopes 
And did you have a seed mix for that? There is seeding. Uh, and again, just like before we, yeah. you know, our I'm standard following C6 on the left side of the sheet. Yeah, it talks about revegetation measures. It talks about seed mix. Um, yeah, so so that's where it's um, detailed. Mitch, are you able to maybe screen share? Sorry, what do we need? That sounds like C6. Yeah, C6. Yeah, one second. Mm -hmm. Minimum four inches loamacy was spread over disturbed areas, smooth uniform surface. Um, talks about uh, apply limestone fertilizer, corn and test, soil test. Soil testing is not feasible. Fertilizer, maybe a, it talks about fertilizer ap applications. Um, it talks about slopes, um, seeding, 47% creeping, red fescue, red top, tall fescue. And I think these were, Larry, I don't know if you remember if these are notes that we got from Charles. I honestly don't recall. I, I believe those are our standard Western Mass yeah. right. notes. So, and the idea is that those are for the slopes only. There's no other mass areas of revegetation. And I think and we would only care about the buffer zone, right, Travis? Anything outside the buffer zone is not our jurisdiction. Well, those, those slopes would be within the buffer zone. Right. I guess I meant the, not the ones on the, on the west side. Uh, well, yeah, not those. Um, yeah, so I guess my question then is, so those slopes um, on the eastern side, north and eastern side, um, are those going to be maintained as lawns then and mown? Is that the, is that how they're going to be maintained going forward? Well, preferably they'd, they'd end up being taken over in a natural fashion. Um, but the, I don't think we have a strong desire to have them be manicured lawn space. Um, mm -hmm. But but they do need to be maintained in you know in a fashion so that they stay stabilized. Um, so I think we're probably just working towards the idea that we, you know, would would like to see a native native mix in the in the buffer zone at the least. Um, if if you write that in there, we'll we'll transpose that onto the plans. Not to uh, cut off anybody with any other um, sort of seating concerns, but that was that was mine. Do you, uh, Fletcher, do you want to see a pre-construction native seed mix to be approved by the Conservation Commission? I think that's a good plan. Yeah. Okay. So approved by the commission or just by the agent? Right, uh, agent would work for me. Yeah, I think that's what we did for the last one. Okay, good call. Are there any other special conditions, anyone? Well, I just, um, as far as the tree removal goes, because it looks like the majority of this is um, is forested currently, is that, I assume the plan plan is to move forward as quickly as possible. Um, we're kind of going into the wet season. I'm just curious if um, if there is a detailed plan on uh, the tree removal or there's there's no more plan other than you know these are the disturbed areas. We're not going to cut down trees that we don't need to cut down. That's for sure. That's wasteful and cost money that that we don't want to. Um, but you know the idea is that it's it's simply it's although it 
you know, I, I guess it's in the eye of the beholder whether or not this is a, a lot of space. I mean, we do we do have the need to make sure our BMPs are in place to make sure that, you know, any um, soil that, that ends up becoming exposed doesn't migrate into the regulated areas. Um, but but we, we would like that work to be covered under this order of conditions. Is it less than an acre that you have for this parking area? I guess I'm asking, do you need a stormwater pollution prevention plan? Yeah, I think it's under an acre since we've pulled out the additional work, Chris yeah. and Larry. Are you able yeah. to do a quick measurement? The don't don't quote me to the nearest square foot, but the proposed impervious pavement area is about twenty thousand four hundred feet. And what about the earth disturbance, though? Um, I bet you it's about ten percent more than that. Yeah, I was going to say combined, it's it's significantly less than forty three thousand. I mean, yeah, any, you would need to double that to be at a, yeah. at an acre. Correct. So. Uh, I, I mean, my only um, concern with asking that was, you know, severe soil disturbance and, uh, but I mean, the erosion controls are there and uh, you're paving over that yeah, area within... that would be disturbed anyway. So I don't. I guess I don't really have uh, any more on that. And the, the timing of events, you know, once the site's cleared and grubbed, it'll be compacted, proof rolled, imported uh, DOT material brought in, compacted and paved. Uh, you know, so it'll be relatively quick. <laughs> but uh, I'm sorry, as far as um, we, we briefly talked about this before, but the, the thought was that you wouldn't really be bringing in much fill, outside fill or any outside fill, considering you're kind of lessening grade and increasing grade in different spots, or, or is that not how that's working? Um, it's going to be it's going to be close to balanced. The only okay. fill that we need to bring, we need to haul material off that's unsuitable, and we need to bring material on that will make up the gravel uh, pavement sub base. Okay. Um, and when Larry was talking, we, and what we do on a site like this is, you know, we put up the stormwater BMPs, um, and then we we do the clearing, and we, you know, make sure the stormwater is going to the, the proper locations, and that those locations are stabilized properly, and then we try to cover it with the, or we do our mass earth balance, and then we try to cover it with the uh, the gravel is quickly as we can because it it's much more durable than the soil uh, that would be underneath it and then that that's that's a very good place to be prior to paving so okay yeah my my main concern was just that if there's dirt fill brought in that it's clean fill um, if you're looking at <clears throat> mitch can you put c6 back up Yeah, sorry, one second. Okay. So if you were to <clears throat> kind of, if, if you look at the very top of the park line, you see the, the grades that, that parallel the edge of pavement and kind of hug the corners, mm -hmm. those are the cut grades. And if you go to the very bottom southeast corner, those contours that hug those pavement edges, those are the fill grades, so cut and fill. But if you look kind of halfway through the parking lot and you follow those two interior contours that parallel the existing contours, they go up to a point where there's there's no no grade. And so that's kind of the break even line right there. And you can see that it's almost equivalent cut on the top is filled to the bottom, minus the differences related to organic organics on the top layer. Um, and then the gravel that we need to bring in the the earth um, that that's as balanced as we thought we could do. Mm 
All right. To uh, excuse myself for one second. Be right back. Okay, let's uh, uh, wait until Fletcher gets back so he doesn't miss anything and he can vote on this public hearing without missing anything. All right, looks like Fletcher's back. Sorry about that. That's all right. Um, so one, one other thing I was just gonna bring up is that in there, um, they did submit you know, a stormwater management plan that um, has, uh, frequency of uh, maintaining BMPs and the maintenance log will be completed. Uh, so I just wanted to point out that that is in the plan. All right, so right now for potential special conditions, I have updating the NOI form with current scope of the project and pre-construction native seed mix to be approved by the agent. Does anyone have anything else they would like to bring up before we vote on issuing this order of conditions? I'll just mention the interest of the act again. Oh yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Mitch. Could you maybe bring those up again? Yeah. It just helps to see them other. It's hard to have all of the interests in your mind. Yeah, I know. Memorized. I don't. This is a buffer zone to a uh, bordering vegetative wetland near an intermittent stream. It looks like uh, G uh, C I, I suppose. I I would probably say F and H too, right? Like, you know, yep, yep. wildlife habitat, the storm, storm damage prevention. That's what we had on the last one, C, F, G, H, I. Yeah, so along the bottom and up the right side there. Yeah, all right. So if there are no objections from the commissioners, we'll go with that for the interest. Okay, not hearing any other conditions. So uh, we can vote on issuing this order of conditions. I'll do a roll call vote here. Erica? Aye. Kristen? Aye. Fletcher? Aye. All right, and I am also an aye. So um, we'll be issuing an order of conditions for this project at 15 Greenfield Street. And again, sorry everyone that 
you've had to go through all these technical difficulties, but thank you for sticking through with us. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. Have a good night. Right. Have Take a good care. Night. Have a good night. Yeah, let me get back to my agenda here. Okay, so uh, next on the agenda, we have other business and enforcement updates, health camp road emergency certification, installation of mini pile structures. Right, we recommended the uh, emergency certification to Tracy at the last meeting. Mm -hmm. And now we just need to ratify it. Is there any uh, update on there? currently working on that or TB, TBD? Yeah, I don't have any updates yet. They probably are just starting. All right. Did we did we um, have any conditions with that or? I don't, I don't know think we, I, don't I think, think we, we said maybe- We said leave the erosion control up, yeah. Just to make sure no sediment made it into the river. Right. Got it. I said that, yeah. <laughs> that was Mitch and I talking about that. So, Mitch, can you remind me of the process? Do we just need to make a motion to ratify? Uh, yeah. The emergency certification. Yep. Anyone have any questions or comments or want to make a motion? Uh, if there are no questions or comments, I'll make a motion to uh, ratify the Emergency certification for New England Power Company Health Camp Road project, uh, parcel R32 2B. Second. All right, any other discussion on that? All right, not hearing any, so I'll do a roll call vote. Erica? Aye. Fletcher? Aye. Kristen? One second. <laughs> like <laughs> That's okay. Trying to go through the file really quick, but I'm really I'm on my last thing. Uh, what did you do? I. And I'm also an I. So that is ratified. <clears throat> um. And so next on the agenda is any topics not reasonably anticipated 48 hours in advance of posting this agenda. Um, Mitch, is there another emergency certification? Right, for the about center school, um, some trees coming down. Basically, I issued it for some of the trees that could fall in the parking lot, and then for some in the woods. Um, I think Rachel is here for that. We can either amend the NOI that's there, or they can do a new submission, or I guess talk about what we want to do. Okay. All right. Um, so, do, so we need... Do we need to ratify the emergency uh, certification yes. then for that one? Do you have that? Uh, sorry, I don't have that open right now. Yeah, I can pull it up. This is what they submitted. Mm -hmm. um, it's trees in this north parking lot. It's the ones with X's on them. Yeah. I think there's more than that. Those are, yeah, those are just sort of the but that's, that's abstract the representation yeah. of mm. trees. And then. I think this is one that they want to come down, but probably isn't an emergency. Which which one is the? Uh, it's like this hanging one that's that leaning that could fall, but not into the I parking see. lot. Then I guess um, some of these um, their tree service guy I talked to did recommend taking them out as soon as you can. Is that the black oak? Yeah, it's the back side.
And I think some of these had to come down to remove the ones that could fall. And then these are the ones that are just in the woods. Um, yeah, I guess uh, maybe Rachel, if you wanna talk about the request. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the request came from from some of the the teachers as well as the sites. Um, the school has a landscaper that does their um, winter maintenance, their plowing, their road maintenance, and their you know any anything on site. Um, and he noted when the tree fell down in the parking lot, he had someone from his staff, who's an arborist, walk walk the perimeter just to see if there were other areas that were of concern. Um, and so there were nine trees around the parking lot that that they recommended um, taking down because they were dead or already in the process of falling and concern was with wind damage you know that could impact a car um, there were three to four trees in the in in the woods and the school just so everyone uh, knows the school has a forest kindergarten program so some of the some of the per, some of the um, pre-K and first pre-K and K uh, classes actually are inside the building all day, but there are some classes that are outside all the day there. Even when it's cold out, they just bundle up more. Um, and they call, you know, they call these the wood spots. So little kids are out there observing, you know, doing everything they would be doing inside, but they're outside. Um, and so this one, the one area in the woods that um, was identified they call it the screaming tree, an old maple tree that has, it looks like a mouth on it. Um, that looks this pretty dead. And so they're worried that it could fall on the kids when they're out there. So what they would, that's the one tree in that area that they would want to top. You know, they leave the screaming part for educational value and habitat value, um, but they'd want to top that tree. And then there were, three other trees, I believe, in that area that had a couple branches that were just dead and kind of waiting to fall that they wanted to get ahead of trimming. And with this weather, um, there were, and the spring, you know, we usually, if it comes in like a lion, uh, wanting to get ahead of that and make sure that people were safe. Yeah, I was going to say, if they were going to fall, they may have already fallen today. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Nature may have helped them on a snow day. Yeah. So, and I think all of these trees are, um, there's not riverfront area at this site. It's just all buffer zone, right? Right. Um, yeah, and I know, so one question Mitch and I were talking about was like the emergency certification process and how like the Wetlands Protection Act says that it should be a public, agency doing the work or someone ordered to do the work by a public agency. And so, I mean, this goes along with the last one too, but um, I guess what we've been doing is saying like the planning department is the public agency, like that's where Mitch works is at the planning department and mm -hmm. then like approving that this is an emergency. But I know Mitch was, I think Mitch was going to reach out to Mark Stinson at DEP just to like confirm that it can work that way. I don't know if he's done that yet, but very least it hasn't been a problem with doing it that way. Um, so that? it looks like there's some admin approvals for stuff like this we've done in the past. So that might be another option. I was just going to say that, you know, like an administrative approval from the agent, not the commission for minor buffer zone activities would make sense and look at 10.02 for what that means. Um, but I don't know. I mean, is it, isn't that yeah, different I, from the issue Travis brought up though? That's different from emergency. Exactly. But also I think we would need that to be like a policy like in our rules and regulations or something, the administrative approval thing. And we've talked about this in the past, but um, anyway, I don't, I don't wanna get like too, too deep into like reviewing all of our processes right now, but I just wanted to bring that up because Mitch and I were talking about it and we have done it this way in the past um, and done like an emergency approval this way. So um, I think 
unless we hear otherwise, we can continue <laughs> to do that, I guess. I did ask Mitch to reach out to Mark just to see, but that can be for the next one, I guess. I don't know. So, um, Rachel, just to get back to, so it sounded like some of the trees, they just wanted to take branches off and then some of them, they wanna cut down all the trees. Yeah, so in the wood spot where the kids are actively sitting and looking at looking mm. at the dirt and, and whatnot, um, there's the screaming maple that they want to top, so they leave the trunk. Mm -hmm. um, and that one's already dead, you said? It's been dead, yeah, it's been dead for some time. But um, so they would cut any any limbs that are above that, that mouth, and then they leave the trunk. So that's only cutting in the wood spot. Um, mm. And then there were three oak trees nearby that had dead overhanging limbs that would have a, they prune, prune those and they'd leave the limbs on the ground. So any, I, I talked with the school and said, hey, if you can leave the wood on the ground, you know, if you can leave trunks, that would be better for habitat. And they were okay with that. Mm -hmm. And they're Is gonna be cl climbing these or? Climbing these? Maybe, oh, you um, mean how are they going to? to equipment. Yeah, um, Jeremiah was going to use for the parking lot. He was going to use a spider lift, mm -hmm. uh, and he said it has about a twelve by twelve footprint. It has little tracks, you know. Um, I was just curious about the ones in the in the woods. I think he was going to try to use the same same piece of equipment. Okay, Is, there's access to get a. He thought he could get. He thought he could get through there. Yeah. Okay. I guess what I was thinking was the the tree the branches like vista pruning is you know uh, like exempt uh, from even needing any approval. So it kind of seems like just the pruning that some of the branches might not even need our approval. I think it okay. kind of finds vista yeah. pruning weirdly like it oh, says it for the purpose of. The view? views, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, the I mean, only difference what it is, I, but. I can think of is what you were kind of alluding to, maybe Fletcher, is that the vehicle use. Um, so if you wanted to condition any like no refueling in buffer zone or something like that, that would maybe come into play. But it does sound like it pretty close to exempt. I don't know. But I mean, if we thought maybe it was exempt, we could just approve it too, you know, I mean, just, just so there's no, um, no complications or anything. Yeah, it does say in the uh, act, vis vista pruning means a selective thinning of tree branches or understory shrubs to establish a specific window to improve visibility. And safety like hazard tree pruning and removal in resource area is exempt because it's a safety emergency, right? So I, I think that's where there can be like this emergency process. Right. But I don't think it's I don't think it's exempt. No, yeah, because it requires this process. Or or some or an RDA or, you know, whatever. Right. Some yeah, classes. I was told on another project that the emergency certificate is helpful when time is of the essence. Um, and yeah. as time goes on, you know, risk goes up. So, but there's usually like a 24 hour approval process for that. Um, yeah, and Mitch, it sounded like you, you approved it, is that right? And then we so, just have to ratify. Yeah, I approved the the parking lot ones. I guess we can talk about how we want to have the others, but I guess we were talking about like it's not an emergency because <laughs> it's only an emergency because you're there. You don't have to be there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't go around the trees. Like right, the emergency is being created by being there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and like I know, like this is where they were holding those classes, but like, is it possible to hold the classes 
slightly somewhere else in the woods while you know going through like an RDA process for those maybe I don't know I think that's my question Wait, about whether yeah, that's an emergency or not I, I think it might be a risk wherever they go in the woods mm -hmm, that's true as the woods are are you know mm -hmm. yeah. um I personally especially if we can add conditions to the emergency cert I don't have an issue doing it this way, but um, I for think all the trees, for all the trees, yeah. If, is the oak? Um, I don't have the map up. Yeah, can we is see the, the map again? In the BV, um, in what's considered BVW, or is that still buffer? Because I thought it was in the in a green section when I looked at it, but I don't remember if that was BVW. I don't think it was labeled on the map. You're talking about the parking lot oak? Uh, no, the oak in the pick. Oh, was I just looking at my screen? Sorry, that was on my screen. Take the, <laughs> uh, take the screaming one. Yeah, that one. Oh, that was a maple. Um, oh, okay. Um, yeah, the blue X in the. I thought it was. Oh, I see. That's outside. Never yeah, mind. I it's see it. Yeah, BBW. And uh, sorry, it's a buffer. <laughs> Another B word. Yeah. Oh, but it is BBW. That's the brown. Huh. Mm hmm. No, no. So the, the green the is green. is the the green is the wetland. The okay. gold is the, the touch zone yeah. and the orange is the hundred. Is the hundred. Okay. Got it. Then yeah, I don't have any other my my only concern really is the um if you're bringing equipment in there that it be like a dry dry day where it's not gonna cause erosion. Um That's the only thing I can think of. But. Yeah, and no refueling in the buffer for the full hundred foot, I think. Yeah. Well, what about up at the parking lot spot? Um, you know, they could refuel the turnaround. Okay, I was gonna say they could be in the parking lot and still be within the buffer zone. Yeah. Parking lot, oh. still be in the buffer zone. They'll have to park on the east side. Yeah, I have to say, I love that they call it the screaming maple. That's very cute. There was a and kid that, there that was like very concerned that it was being like taken out. Oh, but really they were happy that, that it would be cut above that. Just give a haircut. Yeah, last fall the teachers started making a map of the of the campus that was like cartoony, and every part of campus has a name. Mm. You know, like the hidden woods or the magic forest or nice. the Lover Hill, you know, they've got, we'll love to see that actually that map when it's done. Mm -hmm. Four minutes. I just had a, a not part of conditions, but just had a question um, when I was reading the thing. It said that the trees in the parking lot were going to be left like breast high. Can you translate that sort of into feet? Yeah, okay. about four feet. Four, four feet. Okay, so pretty short. Okay. Okay, so it sounded like um, maybe we want to approve or uh, ratify the emergency certification, um, but ratify and amend it to include all, all of the trees and with the condition of not, um, not bringing equipment into the, into the woods on a wet day i don't know how to condition that exactly. i would say i would just say when to more of a, an affirmative to to do the uh the work in the woods on a day where the soils are dry and stable maybe that'd be easier yeah just trying to what's the it. best way to amend the emergency certification I mean, can you, because that, was that already sent to DEP? Is that? Yeah. Yeah. 
don't know. I mean, I wonder if you can just amend it and send it to DEP again and say that when the Conservation Commission ratified it, that it was amended. I'm not sure. Yeah, I suppose so. I think we should try it. I mean, what's the point of ratifying it if you can't change it? Yeah. You, know, you just yeah. have to say yes. Yeah, right. yeah. And then if that doesn't, I mean, if that didn't work, we could also do a second, you know, a second one for the other trees, but I don't think we should have to do that. Um, Wrong button. <laughs> I'll make a motion to, or is it? Yeah. yeah so, stop me if it's too early, but I'll make a motion to ratify the uh, emergency cert for the center school, given the conditions of no refueling in the buffer zone and conducting in forest work uh, only when the soils are dry and stable. I'll say that. Stable, yeah. I don't know if dry is the best. I think there was a condition of frozen. even snags. I don't know if you want to keep that. Oh, and yeah, the condition of um, that the snags can be. Oh, I'm sorry. You're saying about leaving snags? Yeah, that that all trees will be left um, four feet or higher. I guess. Okay. okay. All right, um, and just to clarify that you were you were saying for all the trees, not just the ones that were originally approved. Okay, so that was seconded. Uh, we have less than a minute here. Let's see if we can do this. All right, any other discussion? All right, uh, we'll do a roll call vote. Erica, aye. Kristen, aye. Fletcher, aye. All right, I'm also an aye. So that is approved. This I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. We might have other things on the agenda. I don't know. We might have to come back in, unfortunately. No, I think that's right. it. I think well, that's it? Yeah. That's all I got. Uh, Motion to adjourn. Seconded. Second. All right. So we had a motion to adjourn <laughs> <laughs> that was seconded. I wasn't sure. I was like, should I log back in? Are we done? I know. I that's what know. I thought, too. We had five. Se we had like five seconds. We could have done it. <laughs> All right, I'll do a roll call vote, I guess. Erica? Aye. Kristen? Aye. Fletcher? Oh, Fletcher may or may not be here. Aye. OK, all right, <laughs> and I am also an aye. So uh, we are adjourned at 8.27 PM. Mm -hmm.